Joining us now to discuss is Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs. Congressman, thanks for being here. Hey, Emerald, good to be with you always. Now, you're one of the few voices of reason in, in, in an increasingly theatrical Congress like we're seeing uh, play out in the January 6th committee. So what was your overall reaction to what you've seen so far in these hearings? Well, I think I'm underwhelmed and I think I think most Americans are underwhelmed. You know, you, you nailed it here. And, and if I can just elaborate on this for a second, the reason that this committee is so illegitimate is because they violated all the rules, both the rules that they established to set up the committee, but all the rules of normal procedures in, in committees. So, I mean, they want to be, they want to defame Rudy Giuliani, but in a court of law, for instance, or actually in a normal committee, you would actually have people who would resist or push back and, and maybe you have a better chance of getting at the truth, but that's not what you get here. In a court of law, if you made that statement, you would have to have some kind of foundational uh, background or, or describe it. Why, why do you say it was inebriated? It, and then the, the third thing, and this would be the most important thing is, why is that even relevant? It's not relevant to any of this stuff, which gets to the heart of it and it goes to what you're saying. They're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to defame anybody who supports President Trump, and they're trying to ignore evidence of an anomalies or, or irregularities in the election uh, altogether. And then ultimately, they deny the Constitution. I mean, good grief. You can have opinions that the election yeah. was stolen. You can. Yeah, well, not according to, to the J6 committee. Now, clearly, I mean, and this reminds me of a lot of the tactics they used during the Russiagate investigation. As we know, they, they flat out lied in the end. But you can see them trying to establish some kind of criminality because it's very clear. We've talked about this a lot. The objective is to come after Donald Trump and make sure he can't run again. Here, here is one of the tactics they seem to be using. Uh, this was a sound from yesterday where they're questioning the $250 million that was raised to help uh, fight, uh, you know, to fight election fraud claims. Listen. The claims that the election was stolen were so successful. President Trump and his allies raised $250 million, nearly $100 million in the first week after the election. On November 9th, 2020, President Trump created a separate entity called the Save America PAC. Most of the money raised went to this newly created PAC, not to election-related litigation. We'll also show that the Trump campaign used these false claims of election fraud to raise hundreds of millions of dollars from supporters who were told their donations were for the legal fight in the courts. But the Trump campaign didn't use the money for that. The big lie was also a big ripoff. And those donors deserve the truth about what those funds will be used for. Throughout the committee's investigation, we found evidence that the Trump campaign and its surrogates misled donors as to where their funds would go and what they would be used for. Now, Congressman, is that any basis for criminality or any truth to it? And, and then thirdly, if there were leftover funds, could that money be used to help people who are being targeted by Democrats at the Biden DOJ, like the J6 defendants? Yeah, I mean, if, it, if there was criminality, it would be investigated by the executive branch, right? I mean, that's where, that's where any allegation would mm -hmm. be investigated. It wouldn't be brought forward in a in a goofy, uh, illegitimate committee of Congress. And you know what, Emerald? Here's, here's the thing that drives me crazy is, I want to know how many members of that committee are, are using their membership of that committee as fundraisers. I, I, you know, dollars to donuts, yeah. somebody's out there sending out emails trying to raise money or sending out snail mail trying to raise money. But, but they get all up, hot and bothered here People support this uh, President Trump. They support his efforts. They, they want to see him run again for Pete's sakes. He's the most powerful, most popular Republican in the country. And, but, but that you can't, the Democrats can't sanction that. They hate Donald Trump more than they love the truth, more than they love the country. It really honestly is true. That is how they feel. And they hate him so much, they're targeting his uh, supporters. We spoke with Bonnie Nichols yesterday. Her husband, Ryan Nichols, is a J6 defendant 
He's still in solitary confinement. He's been there for 16 months, Congressman. He has PTSD. His health is deteriorating. Listen to what his wife told us. How is Ryan doing right now? Ryan is not doing very well. Um, he has been in prolonged solitary confinement for over 16 plus months in torturous conditions. He has not been able to view his discovery. He has been denied access um, to worship, to nutritional food. He has not had a haircut in over a year, and he has not been able to see the light of sunlight. Uh, but worst of all, he has not been able to see his children um, at all due to COVID. And these are extreme torturous conditions that no American citizen should have to endure especially a Marine veteran that served his country honorably. Congressman, what is it going to take for to change the situation of these defendants so that they're actually getting equal application of the law and the rule of law in their situations? It should be innocent until proven guilty. Emerald, it's going to take um, members of Congress, more than the handful of us that are speaking out on this. And again, by the way, we're having a press conference tomorrow on these issues. Um, but it's going to take more than just us going forward, working with the attorneys who are representing some of these J6 defendants. It's going to take all of the Republicans in Congress, both House and Senate. It's going to take the American people rising up and speaking out because the executive branch um, and the judiciary are mistreating these these uh, defendants. There's no reason for this guy to be, Ryan, for, to be in solitary confinement for, for any reason there, at all, much less for as, as long as they've gone. Even international law would say if you're in solitary confinement more than 10 days, that is torture. And this, so this guy's been tortured, his, but his, we, not to mention his wife and children and his loved ones who are being tortured. This is outrageous. We need, we need um, the American people to continue to rise up and speak out like you've been doing and, and, and bring this forward to the attention of the American people. We have to do this because the, uh, right now the opponents to these guys are so bad, are so bad and so evil, they, they won't allow due process to happen and won't allow these guys to be heard Character properly in an adequate defense. Well, thank you, Congressman Biggs, for being one of the few congressmen to actually say something. And I hope the rest of your Republican colleagues actually grow a spine. Thanks, Emerald. Good to be with you.